Okay, welcome everyone to Level Up, how to add levels to your games by Tokyo EdTech, that is me. So today we're gonna to be talking about different levels in a game. And some of the topics are, what is a level? Uh, it seems kind of silly or, or basic, but a lot of people just don't know what they mean by a level. And then we gotta talk about what causes a level change. And this is, this is gonna be different in every game. And then also, what do we need to keep in mind when there is a level change? And before I get started, I wanna give a big shout out to uh, my first member ever, Kevin, 16-bit member. And speaking of leveling up, 8-bit uh, member Paul has now upgraded to a 16-bit membership. So thank you so much for that, Paul, appreciate it. And if you'd like to join, you can click the join button down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what a level is. People often ask me on my channel, how do I add levels? And I think the first question they have to ask, answer for themselves is, what do you mean by a level? So here are some different level types. And this is not all different level types, but here's some ideas. So for example, in a level, you might increase the speed of your player, increase the speed of the game. And I'm actually going to walk you through a little bit of code today to do that in my snake tutorial. Uh, you might increase your strength, you might increase your magic, for example, or the, the power of your weapons. You could add more enemies in your level, you could add more obstacles for the player. You could add goals, bonuses, and you know stronger weapons, which is something we see in a lot of RPGs. A very typical thing is to change the map, so we finished level 1, like, like say Pac-Man, or and you go to the next screen, or Donkey Kong, classic games. Or let's say level 2, you get an extra life, or level 3, whatever that case may be. So you really have to think first, what is a level for that particular game? Now if it's, say, chess, you might just increase the, you know, the power of the AI and give it more uh, processing time, for example. So, yeah, you got to first think about what type of level you want to do. Then you got to think about, well, what causes a level change? So, for example, oops, let me uh, make that big for you. And so for a level change, for example, you might change a level when you reach a certain score when you've killed all the enemies on a particular level, uh, when you've killed the level boss or bosses, uh, reach a certain point on a map, which is something, again, very common with RPGs. You hit the door, you hit the exit, and it takes you to the next level, which is the next screen or a next challenge. Or you could have uh, some type of countdown timer going on where you know it hits zero and you know your time's up for that level. Uh, or you reach a certain score before a level, before a timer is up. There's, there's all kinds of different options here. So let's take a look at what that might look like and some things you need to think about when you do leveling. So this is just going to be a little bit of pseudocode. And like I said, later I'll show you how to do that with the snake game, a little example. So basically when you make a game or you make a program like this, you tend to have like your initial setup. So this is where you set like, you know, the score of the game is going to be zero. Um, you know, your, your player, you know, this is where you set up your player equals blah, 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 blah. Uh, you just basically set up the game, you set up the screen, and you have your first thing. So when you start the game, you're going to have level probably equals one. Okay. And then, you know, you have some other code, you have your functions, you have your keyboard bindings or whatever, depending on, you know, the type of game that you're doing. And then you're going to, of course, have at some point, you're going to have your main game loop. And this is the part of the game, or part of the program rather, that runs the game. And it runs, it does everything, all the collision checking, all the keyboard, well, all the keyboard checking, depending on how your program's set up. And this is what controls how your game's working. So typically this would be a while true loop or some kind of while loop uh, that would keep your game going. Now, yeah, so then you've got checking your collisions, etc., etc. So that gets us to, uh, you know, levels. So, or deal with levels. So, you know, when the game starts, as you can see here, we're in level one. So what we'd have to do is put some type of code in here to deal with that. So as I said earlier, we could say reach a certain score. So let's go ahead and do that one. So if what we gotta do is just put it, so if score equals, let's say 100, for example, then we're gonna say the level plus equals one. We're gonna increase the level. And then we have to think about, well, what does that mean for this particular game? So, you know, again, we could increase the speed, increase strength, magic, etc., etc. So let's do just do lives, and this isn't real code, this is kind of pseudo code. So if we want to add lives, we'll say, you know, for example, we might say something like player.lives plus equals one. Okay, so every time, so if you hit 100, you get lives. Now, 
this code is not going to work correctly. It's not going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. Because what's going to happen is if your score is 100, you add a level, you add players' lives, you go through the loop again, your score is still 100. So you're going to get another life, and another, or another level, another life, another level, another life, another level, another life, okay? So on and so forth. So basically with the level system, generally speaking, if you're going to do a scoring type thing, you have a couple choices here. You could either do something like this, you know, score plus equals, you know, 100. You get a 100 point bonus for hitting level one's target score. Now, this would work in a case where there's, it's not possible to lose points. Because if you have a game where you could lose points, you wouldn't want to do that because you could go back to 100 points and you're already on level one. So probably the best way to do this would be to make two conditions. So if the score equals 100 and level equals one, okay, then you get lives, something like that. Then you can do something like L if, oops, L if score equals 200 and level equals two, then you go up to level plus equals one, that take you to level three. And then maybe level two, instead of player lives, uh, maybe uh, the game delay, so which is slowing down the game, uh, you subtract a little bit from that, minus equals 0 0.1, whatever, whatever that number might be. There's all types of things, as I said here, different types of level types. Um, we could add, let's say we could add something enemy, so we could do something like, or maybe at 200, level two, we add our first boss. And we say, uh, and you know, the enemies list, we have a list of enemies dot append, and then maybe he's got a, you got a boss class, you know, you're gonna add the boss at zero comma zero, and let's say it's got 100 hit points, and you know, there's, there's all kinds of things you can do here. It's really gonna depend on the game. But this is like the general pattern, at least for a score-based type of, uh, you know, leveling up. And then, you know, if it was, say, if it was a timer, uh, sorry, if it was, say, I'll kill all the enemies, okay? So if, you know, this might be something if length of enemies, if you have a list of enemies, uh, equals zero and level equals one, then you do your level one stuff. So level one, you get uh, lives. Um, or if it's something like point on a map, so if, you know, player dot location, you know, equals, you know, Ex, you know, exit or whatever that might be. Actually, use exit and say door. Uh, and level equals one, then boom, you go to, you say like, you know, player dot location equals, you know, level two open opening. Yeah, whatever, whatever that might be, however you, your game particularly works. Okay, so you need to think about what an actual level means in your game. Okay. So let's see this code like done uh, with an actual game. So I'm going to go ahead and, oops, I was coding there. I didn't switch the screen. Sorry about that. So yeah, here's the code I was typing. So if the player location equals door and then level equals one, then player location equals level two opening. And then, you know, player, you know, player dot level plus equals one, something like that. So you really just got to think about what's going to happen. I tell my students all the time, coding is, comes down to if this, then that. So if you're on level one and you reach the door, then you go to the level two opening and increase the level. And it's basically, that's all it is. If this, then that. So if you remember that, if you remember nothing else from this tutorial, that's, that, that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the snake game. And this is a tutorial I have and there'll be a link down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So basically you got a snake and I got a score. It's keeping track of the high scores, et cetera, et cetera. And I have a really uh, pretty detailed tutorial for this one if you want to check that out later, if you haven't done that already. And yeah, so basically got this game, I hit the wall, score zero, everything's reset. So what I might want to do is every time I hit, you know, a certain, let's say I hit a certain score, I'm going to increase, I'm going to take the delay and reduce it. So my current delay is 0 0.1. So I could subtract something from that to make the game run a little faster. Okay, so what I can do here is, you know, levels. And let's go ahead and put, set up a level here. So I'm gonna say level equals one. So when I start the game, I've got level one. And then down here, I'm gonna put my code for levels. So 
if level equals one uh, and score equals, uh, let's just keep it simple. Let's just do it for 10 uh, because we don't want to wait to test it. And this is something I tell my students all the time. So like, let's say normally we'd want to do this, you know, every 50 points, for example. And then my students will do this and then they'll test it and then they have to eat five apples every time. And then they have to eat 10 apples and 20 to test something. So it's e much easier if you just set it to something simple and then test it. So we'll say level plus equals one and delay minus equals 0. Point. So 0. 0.1, so wait, 0. 0.01. So that's 10% essentially. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and just do this for the first three levels. And two, three, and so it's 20 and 30. Okay, so let's see if that works. Hopefully it'll be noticeable. I don't know if it will or not. So here we go. Oh, wow, you can definitely see it sped up there. Okay, so yeah, that, that's pretty effective. <laughs> so we got some levels there. Now you might want to print the levels on the screen. Um, so we got score, high score up here, and I'm gonna make the font a little smaller so I can squeeze in uh, a level here. And so level dupe and level. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Okay, and I didn't do it initially, but okay. Well, I don't see score level. Where is level at? That is annoying. Update score display. Okay, I gotta do this down here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this out. Command copy. So we're gonna have a level, we might wanna display that for our players. And, wow, I got that in a bunch of different places. Uh, that's not very efficient. And yeah, and then up to here, that one's zero. I'm gonna go ahead and put level, because we're always gonna start at level one. Ooh, there's an extra space there. I mean, I should do that with all of them. Um, okay, level, level. And level okay let's try that again okay so there we go and oops well it's still a little too big let's go ahead and fix that oh i didn't change the uh the font size in the other ones did i this is this is this is why you should not do what i just did <laughs> and uh okay there's 16. um and just this is why you should have everything in like one if, anytime you have repeated code you should put it into a function okay there we go okay Okay, now the level didn't go up. Ah, oh, there it is, level two, level three. Okay, so you can see how we set different levels for this particular game. All right, so I'm gonna go down to here. And now that it's working, um, what I could do is then I could say, okay, I want this to happen at 50 points, 100 points, oops, and then let's see, 150 points, and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing I could do is instead of subtracting 0 0.01, I could do the I could do this. This is a little bit of math thing. Times equals 0 0.9, so that'll subtract 10% from the current delay. And then once the delay gets smaller, the change will be a little bit smaller as well, uh, because it's so it's 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 will be whatever that is, and then whatever that is times 0.9. So your delay is going down by 10% each time, but the 10% is a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our final test. And let's, we gotta get to 50, so we're still on level one. And here we go, we should get to level two, and it should speed up a little bit. Okay, you could kind of notice that there. Ooh, I missed that, missed the turn. Okay, now you see something here. See, the level is now set to two. Okay, so something went wrong. So I need to reset the level. I forgot to do that. So and this is this is why testing is really important. Level equals one, because when the game restarts, now I've changed something and I have to now test it again. Okay, and looks so far so good.
Yeah, I have some code somewhere to align that, but uh, I didn't put it on this version. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. Okay, I don't know if you noticed the speed picked up there when I hit 50. I'm on level 2 now. Oh, okay, I did not make the turn. And still on level 2. Why is that? That's annoying. Um, level equals 1. Ah, okay. So I've got a couple different places, I think, where I reset the game. That's probably why. Yeah. And reset the level. Again, here we go. I'm testing it. <laughs> Equals one. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. And hopefully this will do the trick. And I should have done this when I had everything set to 10, 20, 30 instead of 50, 100, 150. Uh, and here goes the speed. Okay, yeah, you can see the speed change there for sure. Um, yeah, so that is that. That is an example of how to do leveling. And now again, there's some other things you can do with the modulus, but that's a bit more advanced. You really gotta think that one through. So you can see here, we need to check, in this case, we're using the score as our trigger for a level change. We've chosen a particular score for level one to go to level two. And then we, in this case, what we're doing, what a level means, is that we are delaying, uh, or we are reducing the delay time, which speeds up the game, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. So we got different levels. Now this could be, you know, 100, doesn't matter. You choose whatever you want. But if you're gonna do score, you gotta make sure that your score is gonna get there. If you have like, a, if it's possible that 51 is a score and it never actually gets to 50, then you really gotta be careful uh, for, that, for that to work. Okay, so thinking about levels, going back to kind of what we started on, you know, there's different types of levels, uh, you know, different types of things that you can do to make a level, and that's going to really depend on your game. And then you've got different types of triggers for level changes. So in the example we just did was reaching a certain score, uh, but you need to keep track of two things, your score and the current level, so you know how things should be changed. And that's, as the programmer, you get to make that decision. So yeah, so that's that. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you learned something from it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you can, uh, become a member. It's even better. Uh, and comment below. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye-bye.